Very few sea creatures from any era could rival the physical presence of Basilosaurus, whose serpentine body and formidable size made it one of the most imposing predators of its time. Measuring between 55 and 66 feet in length, it was not only a giant among early whales, but also a dominant force in the prehistoric oceans of the late Eocene. Its elongated body gave it an almost mythical appearance, often described as snake-like, setting it apart from modern cetaceans whose bodies are shorter and more compact. The sheer size of Basilosaurus was complemented by its predatory arsenal. Its long, narrow jaws were equipped with sharp, conical teeth designed for gripping and tearing apart prey, allowing it to take on large marine animals such as sharks, massive fish, and other marine mammals like Derudan. Unlike modern whales, which rely on social hunting strategies or echolocation, Basilosaurus depended on its raw strength, speed, and physical dominance to capture its prey. As an apex predator, Basilosaurus embodied the perfect combination of size, power, and adaptability. Its ability to dominate both large prey and smaller competitors underscores why it remains one of the most iconic and awe-inspiring creatures from Earth's ancient oceans. The late Eocene Epoch, approximately 41 to 33 million years ago, was a time of dramatic evolutionary change and ecological diversity in the oceans. Among the most formidable creatures of this era was Basilosaurus, a genus of massive, predatory archaeocete whales. As one of the largest animals of the Paleogene period, Basilosaurus was the apex predator of its environment, preying on a wide array of marine life. Its dominance in the ancient Tethys Ocean and surrounding regions highlights its significance in the evolution of marine ecosystems and the fascinating transition of whales from land-dwelling mammals to masters of the seas. The name Basilosaurus, meaning King Lizard, is a misnomer that reflects early paleontologists' belief that the creature was a reptile. Later discoveries confirmed its mammalian nature, specifically as an early whale, but the name persisted. Basilosaurus was truly enormous, and unlike contemporary cetaceans, Basilosaurus retained vestigial hind limbs, a vestige of its terrestrial ancestry. These limbs were too small for locomotion, but may have been used for mating or stabilization. Its skull featured long, narrow jaws filled with sharp, conical teeth, specialized for gripping and tearing flesh. This dental structure, combined with its streamlined body, made Basilosaurus a lethal predator, capable of overpowering large prey with speed and precision. During the late Eocene, Basilosaurus was a common inhabitant of the Tethys Ocean, a vast and warm body of water that stretched across what is now North Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Asia. Fossils have been found in regions such as Egypt, the southeastern United States, and Pakistan, indicating its widespread distribution. The Tethys Ocean teemed with life, providing an abundant food supply for Basilosaurus. As the apex predator of its environment, Basilosaurus exhibited hunting behaviors and strategies that reflected its dominance. Its elongated body and powerful tail likely made it an efficient swimmer, capable of rapid bursts of speed to ambush prey. Unlike modern toothed whales, which rely on echolocation to hunt, Basilosaurus had a skull structure that suggests it lacked this ability. Instead, it relied on keen eyesight and physical prowess to locate and capture its prey. The conical teeth of Basilosaurus were ideal for gripping slippery prey, while its jaw strength enabled it to deliver devastating bites. Fossil evidence shows that Basilosaurus targeted Darudun calves, likely exploiting their vulnerability during early stages of life. By focusing on smaller, more manageable prey, Basilosaurus could conserve energy while maintaining its position at the top of the food chain. Back in 2015, paleontologists released updated bite force estimates for the ancient Basilosaurus. Broken bones served as the study's inspiration, and a study on a collection of broken whale skulls from Egypt's 38 to 36 million year old strata was published by Falca in 2012. The four were all from juveniles of the Darudan whale, a sinuous, fully aquatic whale that still possessed specialized teeth for shearing and grasping. Their bite marks were all the same size and spacing as those of the much bigger but related Basilosaurus. Before a final crunch, the larger whales would occasionally rearrange their prey, 
by holding the juvenile Dorudon by the skulls. The fossilized tooth marks provided strong proof that the Basilosaurus was a whale that consumed other whales, just like modern orcas. Snively, Falk and Welsh, however, used an engineering method known as finite element analysis to put Basilosaurus through some virtual chewing in order to limit its biting capability. The researchers discovered that the whale could bite with a force of more than 3,600 pounds in the location of its upper third premolar, based on the skull of a completely complete example of Basilosaurus that was discovered in Egypt. According to Falk, the estimated force was more than enough to pierce through bone, muscle and skin. This was the area of the mouth that the Basilosaurus utilized to split apart little Dorodon heads. Furthermore, as Andy Fark notes, the size of the Basilosaurus clearly affects the result, but even so, this is the strongest biting force ever estimated for a mammal. However, Basilosaurus did not aim for a fatal blow. The researchers discovered that Basilosaurus could grasp victims with more than 2,300 pounds of force. And some of the Dorudan skulls suggest that the conical, canine-like teeth at the front of the jaw were used for initial capture. The Basilosaurus could then throw the victim back farther along the jaw for a lethal shear bite once it was in position. Crocodilians occasionally use pointed teeth to nab turtles and other hard-shelled prey before using their back teeth to completely destroy their defenses. With all of that biting force, Basilosaurus was able to efficiently break up huge prey. That gruesome fact is confirmed by the skulls of dead Dorodon and Basilosaurus teeth that have been worn from scraping against bone. Furthermore, the idea of the whale as a perfect hunter is consistent with the fact that the Basilosaurus was able to deliver such devastating bites, as noted by Snively, Falke, and Welsh. Active predators, such as carnivores like saltwater crocodiles, spotted hyenas, great white sharks, and Tyrannosaurus, have the highest bite forces known. Whether measured from bones or recorded from live animals, although they may occasionally exploit carrion with their strong teeth, predators that need to incapacitate their prey rapidly also need to be able to deliver severe bites. Basilosaurus was one of the most terrifying whales ever. Basilosaurus holds a pivotal place in the evolutionary history of whales. As a member of the Archaeocetes, an early group of whales that bridged the gap between terrestrial ancestors and fully aquatic species, Basilosaurus showcases the dramatic adaptations that enabled mammals to thrive in marine environments. Its elongated body, powerful tail and reduced hind limbs reflect a transition toward more efficient swimming, while its sharp teeth and predatory behaviours highlight the ecological niches early whales began to occupy. The vestigial hind limbs of Basilosaurus are particularly noteworthy, providing a glimpse into its terrestrial origins. These small, non-functional limbs are a reminder of the evolutionary journey that began with land-dwelling mammals and culminated in the highly adapted, fully aquatic cetaceans we see today. The first fossils of Basilosaurus were discovered in the southeastern United States in the early 19th century, and additional remains have since been unearthed in Egypt and other regions. These fossils have provided invaluable insights into the anatomy, behavior, and ecological role of this prehistoric whale. One of the most famous sites for Basilosaurus fossils is Wadi al-Hitan, or the Valley of the Whales, in Egypt. This World Heritage Site is home to a wealth of fossils, including both Basilosaurus and Darudan, offering a detailed snapshot of late Eocene marine life. The site has helped paleontologists understand the predator-prey dynamics between these species and the broader ecosystem of the Tethys Ocean. Whales, the giants of the sea, are among the most remarkable examples of evolutionary transformation in the animal kingdom. Over millions of years, they evolved from terrestrial, four-legged mammals to fully aquatic creatures adapted to life in the oceans. This extraordinary journey showcases the power of natural selection and the adaptability of life. By examining fossil evidence, comparative anatomy and genetic studies, scientists have pieced together the fascinating story of how whales transitioned from land to water. The ancestors of modern whales belonged to a group of mammals called Artiodactyls, even toed ungulates that include animals such as deer, 
cows, and hippos. Around 50 million years ago, during the Eocene Epoch, a hoofed, wolf-like creature known as Pachycetus is believed to be the earliest known ancestor of whales. Fossil evidence of Pachycetus, discovered in what is now Pakistan, shows an animal that lived primarily on land, but had some adaptations for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. For example, its skull features indicate a strong sense of hearing adapted for underwater environments. At this stage, Pachycetus was still predominantly terrestrial, but its proximity to water sources suggests it may have hunted aquatic prey or sought refuge in rivers and streams. This marked the beginning of a gradual shift toward a more aquatic way of life, driven by environmental pressures and opportunities. Following Pachycetus, a more amphibious ancestor emerged, Ambulocetus natans, meaning walking whale that swims. Fossil evidence indicates that Ambulocetus lived about 48 million years ago and possessed adaptations for both land and water. Its long, powerful tail and webbed feet made it an effective swimmer, while its robust legs allowed it to move on land in a fashion similar to modern seals. Ambulocetus likely hunted in shallow waters, ambushing prey by lunging from beneath the surface. This dual lifestyle represents a crucial evolutionary stage as it shows the gradual development of aquatic adaptations while retaining some terrestrial capabilities. Over time, the selective advantages of aquatic hunting likely encouraged further adaptations for life in water. The next major evolutionary step in whale evolution was the emergence of the Archaeocetes, a group of fully aquatic whales that lived between 41 and 34 million years ago. Despite their aquatic adaptations, Archaeocetes still relied on their lungs for breathing and likely spent time near the surface. Their transition to a fully oceanic lifestyle paved the way for the emergence of modern whales, which would refine and enhance these adaptations. Modern whales, or cetaceans, are divided into two major groups, toothed whales and baleen whales. Both groups share common ancestors with the Archaeocetes, but have evolved specialized traits that allow them to thrive in diverse marine environments. Toothed whales, such as dolphins, sperm whales, and orcas, are known for their intelligence, echolocation abilities, and predatory skills. These adaptations enable them to hunt efficiently in the ocean's depths, where visibility is limited. Baleen whales, including humpbacks and blue whales, have evolved filter feeding mechanisms allowing them to consume vast quantities of small prey like krill and plankton. The evolutionary journey from Archaeocetes to modern whales involved several key adaptations. The development of a horizontal tail fluke for propulsion replaced the reliance on limb-based movement. Nostrils migrated to the top of the skull, forming blowholes that facilitate breathing at the surface. The loss of external hind limbs streamlined the body reducing drag during swimming. Additionally, changes in sensory systems, such as enhanced underwater hearing and echolocation in toothed whales, further optimize their aquatic existence. The Eocene Epoch, which spanned from approximately 56 million to 34 million years ago, was a transformative period in Earth's history, commencing roughly 10 million years after the catastrophic extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs the Eocene was marked by significant climatic, ecological and evolutionary developments. This epoch saw the emergence of modern mammalian groups, the diversification of flora and fauna, and the establishment of many ecosystems that resemble those of today. As a bridge between the Paleocene and Oligocene epochs, the Eocene was pivotal in shaping the evolutionary trajectory of life on Earth. The Eocene epoch began with one of the warmest climatic periods in Earth's history, characterized by a greenhouse world, with high global temperatures and no polar ice caps. This period of warmth reached its peak during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, a short-lived but intense global warming event that profoundly affected life on Earth. The Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum was likely triggered by massive releases of carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, possibly from volcanic activity or destabilized methane hydrates. During this time, tropical forests extended to higher latitudes and the Arctic was warm enough to support crocodiles and palm trees. Sea levels were significantly higher than today and vast shallow seas covered parts of continents, creating rich marine habitats. However, 
As the epoch progressed, global temperatures began to decline gradually, leading to the establishment of more temperate climates by its end. Although Australia and Antarctica remained connected, the Earth's continents continued to drift in the direction of their current locations after splitting off from the northern supercontinent Laurasia and the southern supercontinent Gondwana. The western mountain ranges of North America also rose during the Eocene Epoch. The Eocene era's early mammalian taxa are the ancestors of both artiodactyls, even-toed ungulates like deer and pigs, and perissodactyls, odd-toed ungulates like horses and tapirs. The Eocene Epoch is often referred to as the Age of Mammals due to the explosive diversification and radiation of mammalian species. Freed from competition with the now extinct dinosaurs, mammals evolved to occupy a wide range of ecological roles, from small insectivores to large herbivores and formidable predators. Many modern mammalian orders, such as primates, cetaceans first appeared during the Eocene. Early ancestors of elephants, bats and rodents also made their debut, adapting to various niches in terrestrial and aquatic environments. Among the most remarkable evolutionary stories of the Eocene was the transition of whales from land to sea. Early Archaeocetes, such as Bacillosaurus and Pachycetus, showcased intermediate forms in this transition, illustrating how terrestrial mammals adapted to life in marine environments.